Video is almost ready for Mad DIY. Almost done. That's gonna be a good video for you guys. But what I'm gonna show you guys here is how to add your old retro style gaming to the Raspberry Pi 3. Here comes Tony. Tony, Tony, I'm trying to do a video, buddy. The only thing you guys are gonna need is a is a Raspberry Pi 3. So you wanna get these guys here. I just got the basic one. If you go on eBay, you'll see so many different styles of these guys. You can get the complete setup, the ultimate setup. You can get the starter kit. All you need is a Raspberry Pi. Of course, you're gonna need a couple other components, but the average household already has it. Who doesn't have a micro SD card with a USB plug-in adapter that goes into the wall? Even if you're using recording YouTube videos, almost everybody has a GoPro. I'm just simply, I got so many GoPros. I'm gonna take the 32 gigabyte out of my GoPro 3 since I rarely use it. I used a four and a five. I'm going to take that SD card out. I got my card reader there, which I'm going to use. So all I needed was this guy here, the Raspberry Pi 3. So I'm going to use this. You're going to need the micro USB with the plug. You're going to need a USB device. So my bullet here is the USB device. Tony likes bullets. And we have an ethernet cable, which are kind of prehistoric nowadays, but I, I found one there. I have a Xbox controller. This is the Xbox 360 controller. I hear you can do this with a PlayStation controller, Xbox One, whatever. I'm just using an Xbox 360 controller and I have my HDMI cable. So that's all you need to get started. So with that, let's get started. I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's gonna be very simple, very easy, super, super easy. I'm, I'm not gonna give you this extensive technical breakdown. It's gonna be Raspberry Pi 3 Model B for dummies. How to get your retro gaming on. Let's get it started. All right, first things first. I papa, freak all the honeys, bunnies, playboy bunnies, those want money. I don't know, Biggie Small just popped in my head. But first things first, we gotta download some software. Four different softwares, the links are gonna be in the description. You're gonna need 7-zip, SD card formatter, Win32 disk imager, and retro pie image. So when you get to the 7-zip, you wanna go ahead and click on what version you have for Windows. So if you're using a 32-bit version, you wanna go ahead and download the 32. If you're using the uh, 64 you want to go ahead and download the 64 bit version now if you don't know just simply click the start menu and when you get to the start menu right click on computer and there it'll tell you under system type right under your installed memory what operating system version you're running so in my case i'm running a 64 bit operating system so i'm going to download the 7 zip 64 bit so after you install the uh, 7 zip go ahead now to the link for the sd card memory card formatter and you want to scroll all the way to the bottom except the license agreement and the screen will pop up and hit save file and run it. After you download it, you will extract all the files. Just double click on it. It'll extract itself. Gonna accept the agreement, click next. Notice uh, everything installing onto your computer is gonna designate a specific folder or you can change it to something else and let it install. After the installation, you're gonna get an install shield wizard is complete. The launch the program is gonna be automatically checked and just hit finish. Okay, we're going to the next step. Now you're gonna download Win32 Disk Imager. Once you click the link, just give it a couple seconds. It's gonna pop up and ask you to save Save the file or you may have to click the little download button for a win32 disk imager so go ahead and uh, save that and go ahead and get that guy opened up and lastly for software we're going to download we're at bleh. And lastly, for software, we're gonna click the link for the RetroPie and scroll down to where you see Raspberry Pi 2 slash 3. You wanna go ahead and download that one, of course, if you have the two or three. If you have a Raspberry 1 and you wanna download that, I have the Raspberry 3. This is what this tutorial is for. So we're gonna click that guy and get that installed. After you download that file, you wanna find the location of where you saved it on your desktop downloads folder, whatever. You wanna right click that file and this is where 7-Zip's gonna come into place. Once you right click that file, you want to click the 7-zip and then under 7-zip click extract here okay what that's going to do is it's going to create an image file which you're going to use to write the image to your sd card so now you want to just place your sd card in your sd card reader then pop it into your computer so easy okay here we're going to make sure we got our proper drive selected so in my case when i plugged in the uh, sims card it went to the d drive and to the uh, reader there so i'm going to click the options button and then under options format type i'm going to do a full erase and format size adjustment you want to make sure that's set to on okay after you get that formatted i mean if you run into an issue with the format just try just doing the basic format just make sure you have the right drive selected and just hit format i mean the worst case scenario just go to your my computer right click and format it. do the uh, EX format you shouldn't have issues with that so after you get it formatted you want to go ahead and open up win 32 disk imager you're gonna select the image by clicking the uh, folder icon and select where your image is saved mine was still in the downloads folder and the device you want to write it to make sure that's selected so in this case 
I'm writing it to device D and I'm just simply going to hit right and once it's done you'll get a pop-up just click OK and pull your thumb drive out and get it loaded into your Raspberry Pi 3. Okay you want to get everything plugged in you want to plug in your HDMI you want to plug in your power cord you want to plug in your controller you want to also plug in your keyboard USB keyboard and get your SIMS card plugged into there your micro SD card I should say once you plug in your micro SD which is located on the bottom right there you want to go ahead and plug the device into the power outlet to give your Raspberry Pi 3 some power and here we go well now once you get to this well before you get to this menu folks you're gonna see a boot up menu where it's loading everything it may take a good minute for the first time you're also going to notice the lights blinking on your Raspberry Pi and that means you're good Good to go this is a good sign this is a great sign so once everything loads up you're gonna be here so let's get to the next step this is gonna be very quick we are ready to rock and roll now we need to configure the keyboard to get to the keyboard screen you notice at first it said gamepad detected but we want to configure the keyboard first so you're just simply gonna hold down the enter key on your keyboard keep holding down the enter key and then this is gonna pop up now we can configure the keyboard so we can program the Raspberry Pi as you can see I programmed all my keys it doesn't really matter the ones you want to pay attention to for the keyboard is mainly going to be like your your a your b button you want to pay attention to which you program your start and your select button so this is just for the keyboard setting so it's not really that important you can skip these options once you get to the bottom you want to go ahead and select okay and how you do that is simply hit the a button when you get down to okay Okay, you're going to be at a main menu there. You want to hit your start button, whatever you program your start button to be. For me on my keyboard, I just simply hit F1 and you want to scroll down to configure input and you want to hit the A button. And are you sure you want to configure input? Yes. So you want to hit A again. So now gamepad is detected. So on your gamepad, you want to start to configure this and follow all the settings all the way through. So for your A button, your Y button, your B, X, your start, your select, your analog, your left bumper, right bumper, etc. So follow that to the T and we'll continue from there. Okay, moving right along there, we want to go ahead and select the back out of there. Don't hit quit, just uh, simply back out and you want to go to the RetroPie configuration. Once the RetroPie configuration loads, what we want to do is we want to go to Raspify config, but first, this is where you want to plug in your Ethernet cable. Now, you don't have to do it that way because I forgot the RetroPie, the Raspberry Pi three has Wi-Fi built into it that's what makes this thing so wonderful so I'm gonna go ahead and configure my Wi-Fi settings but right after I configure my Wi-Fi settings you don't have to you can just run your Ethernet cable configure everything that way if you like and then you're gonna to go to the Raspi config file so before we go there I'm gonna program my Wi-Fi settings and then I'm simply gonna go into Raspi config once you're in the uh, software configuration tool you're gonna to go down to advance up oh, I'm going all out of function here. You're going to go down to advanced option and you can use your keyboard or you can use your controller. So for me, I'm using my controller. I just simply scroll down and I select right so I can hit select. And then from there, I can go ahead and access the advanced options. To access the advanced options for me, I had to simply hit the B button after I selected it by hitting right. Okay, once we're in here, we're gonna go down to the memory split. I'm gonna hit right, and then I'm gonna hit B to select that. And I'm gonna change this option to 320. Okay, now that I got 320 selected in there, I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Device specific memory settings were found. These have been clear, okay. And lastly, for these changes to take effect, we're just gonna go ahead and hit finish. I'm gonna hit enter, and we're gonna reboot. Look at that, look at that. Oh, she. There's that loadout screen that I was referring to in the beginning. Okay, now that we reboot it, we're gonna go back to RetroPie. We're gonna click A. Uh, we're gonna go back down to the RetroPie setup. Press A on your controller or whatever, enter on your keyboard. Click OK here. And you wanna to go to update RetroPie setup script. You wanna do this every time to make sure you have the latest and greatest so all your installations are gonna go very successful. So we're gonna go here and are you sure you wanna update? We wanna hit yes. Give me the latest and greatest. Fetch the latest version of RetroPie setup script. Click OK. It's loading now. Okay, after that's done, you wanna go ahead and hit okay. And I'm gonna actually go back really quick and 
I'm gonna go to manage packages really quick. Take a little cheat. Sorry guys. I'm gonna select manage experimental packages and I'm gonna load Cody while I'm at it. So you can do the same thing if you like. Cody was actually under optional packages. So I'm gonna go under optional packages and load Cody. Simply scroll down and I'm gonna click OK really quick. I'm gonna install from binary. Got Cody installed. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the uh, back button and we're gonna go ahead and exit out of here and as you, it says install. So I'm gonna back out of here and back out of here and back out of here. So it's gonna do a back up to this area here and now we can load some games. Okay, here's one of the important things. You want to get your IP address. So you want to go down to show IP, hit that. And then of course there at the top center, once it loads, it's going to show your IP address. So make sure you copy that down. So after that, you're going to go over to your computer and here, I'll pull it up, the illustration there for you. You're going to go not in your internet explorer bar. You're going to open up uh, your windows explorer. Like when you go to my computer and your task bar, you're going to type in backslash backslash, whatever your IP address is. And you're going to hit enter. You may get prompt for a password. If you do, mine was just admin password. So username, admin, password is password. But the first time I did it, I didn't even get prompt for it on a different computer. So you may not even get prompt. So it should look just like this. This is how you're gonna move your ROMs over. Once inside, you're gonna see a ROMs folder. If you click on there, you're gonna see all your preloaded ROMs folders. Of course, they're gonna be empty. You have to copy your ROMs over to these respective folders. Okay, now that you got all of that prepared, you need to move over some ROMs. So where do you get them? I mean, there's so many different places to get them. You could just go to Google and just type emulators, ROMs, and several sites will pop up. One of the most popular sites are gonna be emuparadise.me. You can go there, you can download, SNES ROMs that you have, <coughs> NES ROMs that you have, <coughs> Genesis, and so on. But you know, it's uh, it's a gray area. You're when you download the ROMs, you need to own the games, right? Okay. Make sure we're on the same page there. So that's where you can get your ROMs. You just simply go there. If you're going to download some SNES ROMs, I recommend creating folders like uh, SNES folders, Neo Geo folders, Dreamcast folders, and put those ROMs in those respective areas. Help keep you organized there. So go ahead and grab you some ROMs that you already have there that you would like to add on to your Raspberry Pi. Download those guys and I'm gonna show you how to install them. Next, just drag and drop the file over to its respective areas. So within that network folder that we went to, click on the ROMs, select the respective folder, which is gonna be NES. You don't wanna put an NES game in a Sega folder. So open the NES folder, drag and drop DuckTales, since I own DuckTales. What's important here is you wanna actually go ahead and restart your emulator. So just select restart, and when you restart, you now have a new pop-up. I see Nintendo NES. So I'm gonna click in there. And what do I see there? DuckTales. I click DuckTales, it says launching DuckTales. And would you look at that, folks. Dun, 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 DuckTales, woo! Dun, 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 woo! It's a stranger out to find you. Dun, 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 out to find you. All you do is grab onto some DuckTales, woo! Gonna hit start. Start with the Amazon. Oh. Wow. Uh-oh. 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 Come on, Scrooge. I must say, I don't remember how to play DuckTales, but... But as you see guys, that's all you need to do. It's very simple, very straightforward. I wanted to create a tutorial that was gonna be very, very, very straight to the point for folks that don't have a lot of IT experience or anything like that. Sorry for the mess down here. As you see, the Raspberry Pi, I call it Pi, mother, it's Pi, okay? I know it's Pi, but Raspberry Pi is all set and ready. I get whatever game I want, just simply drag and drop. 
let me rephrase that. I get whatever game that I already have. I drag and drop the respective games that I already have in my nice collection down there. So that's how everything works. If you got any questions, leave a comment. Also, I'll have a couple links down there. You can uh, check those guys out. Make sure you stay tuned in. We got so, so, so much coming your way. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Next video coming up, I'm gonna print a nice little custom case for the Raspberry Pi off my 3D printer, my Select Model Price Mini Pro 3D printer. Thanks a lot, guys. Until next time. That takes me way back, way back. It's a stranger out to find you. Da -da -da -da, out to find you. All you do is grab onto some cocktails. Woo!